Welcome back to my Unreal Engine C++ tutorial series. In this video, we'll be covering jumping and looking, an item class, interacting, and UI. Before our content folder gets any more disorganized, let's make three folders. One being blueprint, one being input, and the other being levels. And then sort the assets into the respective folders. Once everything's organized, go ahead and ensure that our player class still has our U properties assigned. To finish off our locomotion implementation, we need to add in two new input actions, one being look and the other being jump. Look needs to be in Axis 2D and jump can remain as is. Then head over to our mapping context and assign our actions. For jump, we'll just have spacebar and look, we need to assign mouse X and Y, and of course, swizzle the Y to act on the Y input axis. In order for us to be able to control our pawn's rotation, we need to set a couple properties in our character blueprint. Ensure that use controller rotation yaw and use controller desired rotation are set to true. Now let's jump over to our character header file and add in two new input actions. Look action and jump action. And of course, we need to bind these actions in our setup player input component method. We're going to use triggered as our look trigger event, and we're going to use started and completed for our jump trigger events. And for jump, we don't actually need to create our own function for this because jump is already a function that is defined in a character, the parent of a player character. If we jump over here, we can see jump and stop jump are both already defined for us. So let's have a second function, bound, calling stop jump on each trigger event completed. This way we can have a variable jump time depending on how long we press the spacebar. Now, of course, we need to actually define these functions, so let's define look. And then call add controller yaw input and add controller pitch input, passing in the x and y. Let's go ahead and compile and make sure that we set these properties. When we hit play, as you can see, we can now look and jump around. Let's make a blank item class of type static mesh actor. The reason we're making it blank is so that we can derive as many blueprint classes as we want from it, with different properties and meshes in each blueprint. So once it compiles, just open it up to check to make sure, and then close it out. Now let's make an item blueprint class. We search item, it should show up. And in here, we can assign it to any mesh we'd like, and we can make it simulate physics. If the mesh is too small or too large, you can come into the blueprint and change the scale settings. Let's make a new input action for interacting. For this input action, we're going to leave it as a bool, and we're going to register it on the E key. In order to interact with something without touching it, we need to use something called a line trace. And a line trace needs a channel to trace against to define what it will block and what it will ignore. So in order to create a new trace channel, we go to Project Settings and Collision and define a new trace channel here and name it whatever you'd like and set the default response to block. And we can ensure that this is working by going under presets and checking a random object type and ensuring that item is set. Now, of course, we need to go back into our header file and create a new input action declaration. And after this, we need to create two new functions for interacting. One called interact and one called interact check. And then an f hit result for our line trace called interact hit result. And then a view vector and a view rotation. In our C++ file, let's include our item.h file. 
and then call interact check every tick. And then register our interact action in our setup player input component method. And of course, we want this to call interact. For our interact function, it's going to be called every tick. So we want to do a line trace every single tick and store the result of the hit actor in our interact hit result variable. So first off, we need to get the controller and call a function called get player viewpoint with two output parameters to store the camera's view vector and view rotation. And then we need to do some vector math to get the vector direction of how far away from the camera we want to trace. Line trace needs to be passed in something called query params, and in these query params, we can add an ignored actor so that we aren't interacting with our own line trace. To call our line trace function, we need to call get world line trace single by channel and pass in our hit result, view vector, interact end, our collision channel, which will be our item hit channel, and that is defined in default engine.ini. You can see here, ECC game trace channel one is our item channel. Then pass in our query params. Now let's code in what actually happens when we press E. So let's check if our interact hit result actor is of type A item. And if it is, let's log one, two, three to the console. After you compile, Ensure that your input action property is set in your player character class, and then hit play and hit E on the cube to ensure that it is working correctly. If we want to have UI show up when we mouse over our cube, we need to define a new asset under user interface called Widget Blueprint, and its parent is going to be User Widget. Designing UI with Widget Blueprints is a whole different system, but for this simple implementation, we're just going to be using a canvas panel and a text. Center your text with the anchors, size to content, and call it something like interact. Now let's get a direct reference to our widget class so we can create it when we begin the game. Let's create a new U property of type T subclass of user widget to get a reference to our interact widget class. And then create a pointer that's going to store our interact widget after creation. In order to use widget blueprints in our C++ code, we need to add the module umg into our build.cs file. After we compile, let's set our interact widget class property in our player character blueprint. In our player character.cpp file, make sure you include blueprint slash user widget.h. If you're ever unsure what to include for a given method, Head over to the Unreal Engine docs, search up your method, go to C++ API, and it should tell you what the exact include is for this. Let's create our interact widget in our begin play method by assigning interact widget to create widget and then passing in the owning object and our widget class. As we see here, create widget is a global function defined in user widget.h. And let's set our owning object to our player controller. Let's add our widget to the viewport and then set its visibility to collapse so it doesn't immediately show when we start the game. Head over to our interact check function. Once again, ensure that our interact hit result actor is of type A item. And then based off that, set the visibility of our interact widget to either visible or collapsed. And now if we compile and play, we should see that interact shows up when we mouse over any item. Thank you for watching this Unreal Engine C++ tutorial. 
From now on, the videos in this series are going to be less broad and more focused on specific topics. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it, and I'll see you in the next one.